Sometimes when I finish an anime, there's just so much they have to say about it that I want to get out there. Maybe I do this through a review where I talk about all the different aspects, or maybe there's just a single part of it that I want to explore more, or maybe I want to explore the themes of the show in a way that I haven't seen anyone else do, or maybe I want to make an epic 12-part video series about why I love the show so much. But then sometimes I just don't have much to say about it other than it was a fun show. And as you can probably tell from the length of this video, Hyperdimensional Neptunia is the latter case. Typically, it's not a show I would bother making a full video about, but I do kind of want to talk about it. And I watched it because of one of my viewers, Arkram100, is a big fan of the show and he got me to watch it. Plus, since he loves Ori Twin Tales almost as much as me, I figured I owed it to him to make this video. So, what is Neptunia? Well, I guess the best place to start is that it's a video game adaptation where there's a large series that they adapt into 12 episodes. So I'm sure you can see how thorough of an adaptation this is. The story takes place in a fantasy setting where each of four nations worship their goddess and the goddess goes around and fights evil and stuff. Oh, and these goddesses are actually cute girls who like playing video games sometimes. So yeah, this is not a show that takes itself too seriously. Though I think this is a good thing because they were able to balance out the comedy and the serious parts, even if the serious parts did not get all that serious. The character interactions are one of the highlights of the show, with each character having their own fun personality, which led to a lot of good comedy. A lot of the characters did grow throughout the series too, especially early on with younger siblings trying to go rescue their older siblings. The villains were also a lot of fun, especially the robot, which... Yes, you'll understand the robot when you get to him. I also loved a lot of the dialogue here, which was helped by the great English dub. A lot of the voice actors were recognizable from other things they had done, which ended up helping to bring to life a lot of the characters, and it was a lot of fun because it sounded like you had Mako and Sayaka from Madoka Magica here in a lighthearted show. There's also Melissa Fawn voicing Neptune here, which I found to be a perfect match from her personality, which is impressive considering I did not really care for Melissa Fawn's voice in other shows, such as Noeen. The studio behind this anime is David Production, who is mainly known for their work on JoJo, and while the styles here are certainly different, there are times when they do insert some of the JoJo style here, which was fun to see. Though, as for downsides, most of the ones I could say, I don't think matter all that much because of what the show is trying to be. The story isn't complex or that interesting, the world isn't really explored, and the characters aren't deep, but when all the show wanted to be was just a fun show, these things just don't really matter. It may not be a show that has a lasting impact on me, and it might not be as fun as some of the other lighthearted shows that I've seen recently, but I overall enjoyed it. So I give the show a score of 6.75 out of 10 and a rating of worth checking out. For similar shows, I would suggest Ori Twin Tales because of course I would, and also Keijo because it fully embraces the ridiculousness of this concept. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you all next time. And maybe when I have more free time, I'll give the game a try as well.